This is the Go Maluku Podcast. And now I would like to give the floor to Ghazali, who is the Indigenous Coordinating Body from the Pacific region, as well as the Secretary of the Indigenous Coordinating Body, uh, to give us the topic of today, uh, selection criteria and mechanism. Ghazali, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Aminato, and good morning, good evening, and good afternoon uh, to you all, uh, where you're dialing in from. Appreciate you all joining in for the first, uh, sorry, not the first, the fourth uh, virtual dialogue um, on the enhanced participation process. Um, just before before I kick off this, um, if in an interactive dialogue, if you uh, want to participate, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, it would help the interpreters if you would, uh, if your connection permits to um, uh, um, turn on your video so that um, interpreters know who's, who is speaking. Otherwise, it's hard to find um, yeah, the person that is speaking from um, a list of names. So if, you, if connection permits, and if you could do that, then uh, it would be very much helpful for uh, yeah, the flow of this conversation and everyone else to be able to participate and listen in into the languages that they, that they prefer. Um, so, we have so today's topic will be um, selection criteria and mechanism and um, let me jump right into it so to so that everyone is on the same page um, in this conversation um, let's let's backtrack it a little bit the uh, there was a ball of confusion there was some confusion amongst indigenous peoples as well as member states um, and that's also trans, uh, transpired into the the enhanced participation process conversation itself. Uh, is it Indigenous people's representative institutions or is it Indigenous people's uh, representatives and institutions? Um, who is this process for? Um, if you so if you if you look back and you go to the to the, the core of the of the issue and what kickstarted this whole enhanced participation process, then you would have to go to the Alta outcome document. Uh, also, outcome document theme th two, paragraph ten. Um, yeah, it clearly enunciates what Indigenous peoples wanted to come out of the World Conference um, outcome document, uh, which is a status for Indigenous peoples uh, that allows the direct participation through their own governments. For example, traditional councils and authorities in the work of the United Nations and put at the at the highest possible level. And in this case, we're referring to the UN General Assembly. Um, that, is the, that, that is the focus of this enhanced participation process. Um, you have seen um, in the General Assembly resolutions, um, numerous council resolutions that it has been shifted a little bit. There is, um, uh, when, it, when it discuss the topic, it is about, uh, the enhanced participation of the uh, indigenous peoples, representatives, and institutions. Um, so we're now also, as as a coordinating body, we're also trying to make sure that the the, the topic is more focused, so that it's it's more clear uh, to member states as well as indigenous peoples what the purpose of this pro process is. So, for example, in the, the 2019 annual resolution of the Human Rights Council, you see that. Um, paragraph 15 talks about the enhanced participation of indigenous peoples. Um, so that it, it is clear that it's solely focused on indigenous peoples, even though they haven't capitalized the I and the P yet, um, that it is for the, yeah, the representatives of the indigenous peoples, of representative institutions, uh, sorry. So in, all, in short, uh, this is what we're aiming for, participation of Indigenous governments or, or and or representative institutions at the UN General Assembly. And in this case, we're actually also focusing on the UN Human Rights Council. Uh, why the UN Human Rights Council? Um, because we're preparing for an upcoming workshop that is going to be held in, uh, in Geneva on November 20th. First until twenty fourth, so that is an which is in a couple of weeks at the United Nations, and it will cover the four topics that are derived from the Secretary General's um, report, and the the topics that were discussed at the General Assembly level. Uh, the four are venues of participation, modalities of participation, and now we have uh, arrived at selection criteria and selection mechanism. These are two two separate 
Um, the last one, there are two separate criteria. However, um, like many of these criteria, they're all interrelated and, into, um, and they all have something to do with one another. And particularly the section criteria and mechanism, uh, we wanted to, to uh, combine them into one session uh, so that we have a clear overview or clearer view of, um, of, the, um, of the discussion amongst indigenous peoples when it comes to the, the criteria and the mechanism. And uh, so this workshop is uh, organized by the Office of High Commissioner, um, and so not organized by the Human Rights Council, and which allows uh, indigenous peoples to participate in, um, yeah, in their individual organizational capacity or as an IPO, indigenous peoples organization, and not having to uh, accredit themselves um, or register as a, a NGO with ECOSOC status. Usually the Human Rights Council, if you want to participate as an NGO, you require an, um, an NGO badge that has ECOSOC status. That is not the case in this in the general workshop uh, because um, yeah, the, it is organized by the Office of High Commissioner and everyone is, um, uh, um, even people that do have an NGO ECOSOC badge, um, they're all, um, yeah, uh, Everyone should register for, for the, that wants to participate that sh should register um, for the um, uh, uh, for the for the workshop through Indico, which is the UN uh, platform for, for for registrations. So we've been organizing it, and uh, so they've been organizing it um, in and with the voluntary fund um, and in conjunction with the uh, Indigenous coordinating body. Um, so the we're, you've arrived at the fourth virtual dialogue. Uh, we'll be talking for two, two and a half hours about second criteria and mechanism. And before that, we had two days. Uh, one day we spoke about the participation modalities and, and uh, venues of participation. And the first dialogue was just a mere, mere introduction on the NS participation process, all leading up to, yeah, uh, uh, so that you can make an informed decision or be more informed um, about the NS participation process, and um, but also more importantly, the submission uh, deadline, which is October 31st, which is in a couple of days, um, to provide your views on the four topics um, so that they, they can be taken into account in the summary reports of the uh, expert um, workshop. Um, to allow for uh, the most time to talk about the, the most possible time to, uh, to talk about the, um, the topic, I'll keep the key issues very short um, and knowing that there will, there's a lot of views on both mechanism as well as criteria. So let's start off with the selection criteria. Um, and these are some of the points, this is not, this does not uh, try to preempt I'll prejudge um, your views on it, just to give you an idea of what is being discussed. Um, and this is just to uh, just an indication of what has transpired in the UN General Assembly process. And some of these elements are derived from the compilation of views that has been provided by the General uh, President of General Assembly in terms of the uh, Janus participation process. So in terms of criteria, because we're starting, starting with that, there's a, a view that the, the, the criteria should be based on the, the provisions of the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And also an, an additional view that has been uh, made was that have, there should be a two-step approach. To first consider whether a group or people is an indigenous peoples, and then second to consider whether the, that specific um, institution is, or a representative institution is eligible for the status. So you see that there is two conversations that, it would, that, that could take place. One is discussion of a criteria as, as in like defining indigenous peoples. And the other one is a discussion on like what represents or what is a is, um, representative institution. Um, from the, uh, from uh, the vast majority of, of indigenous peoples, as well as the indigenous courting body is we don't want to have a discussion on who's indigenous or definition of indigenous. However, um, when you talk about objective criteria, um, they want to be established, co codified in a way 
then it should be on the representative nature of the institution and not have, having that discussion on um, yeah, who's indigenous and who's not. Um, there's also the view that the governing institution need to be recognized by their own indigenous constituents um, uh, over there. And there was also a view of indigenous peoples themselves should determine the criteria for their representation. Um, uh, and when, if you look into the, the UN system um, in terms of selecting criteria, uh, you can look into the enhanced participation of nas national human rights institutions within the United Nations. Um, these, um, so they do have a selection mechanism and they do have their own criteria. And the uh, interesting part is that that criteria is not exactly uh, criteria, but they're, they're principles. And they're also known as the Paris principles um, of which uh, national human rights institutions need to um, yeah, adhere by so that they can be an official NHRI uh, um, uh, recognized by the United Nations. The selection mechanism, and we'll go into that um, um, in, the next, uh, in the next slide, is interesting as well as, and that is something that, that Indigenous peoples might want to consider um, uh, drawing inspiration from. So when you kind of go into the, the selection mechanism, there's, uh, uh, there's a view of the creation of a new and an independent body comprising of Indigenous peoples and member states um, yeah, to specifically focus on the competence and eligibility of Indigenous peoples under the general, and that body could be under the General Assembly. Um, there's also, there was also a view uh, um, uh, um, tabled, and these, again, these derived from the compilation of views um, and, and outlined that a, an existing uh, committee or working group or mechanism could be uh, used um, to, um, yeah, to, to uh, determine the eligibility and the competence of these um, uh, yeah, representative, representative institutions uh, that could, and also a, an institution that, that could include Indigenous peoples or in consultation with Indigenous um, uh, peoples leaders, sorry. Um, again, the, the body must only determine the eligibility of these Indigenous peoples representative institutions rather than uh, the status of the of if they are or are not Indigenous peoples. Um, that that's that's a view that has been um, um, tabled as well. So far within the UN context, what we know of, what we are familiar, sorry, what we are familiar with, is the selection mechanism for the experts. But so not not necessarily as for um, institutions, but as experts for the independent forum, the expert mechanism the local communities and indigenous peoples uh, facilitated a working group under the UNFCCC and the uh, NGO ECOSOC committee. And those have all have very different ways of, uh, of determining eligibility, eligibility and, 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 and a nomination process and selection uh, process. Um, you can draw inspiration from, or you can learn, take best, the, best, yeah, the best practices, or there might be elements that you really want to steer away from. Um, like I said, with the, with, if you look at the, for example, the enhanced participation of national human rights institutions, um, they, uh, in addition to having established their own, the, the Paris principles, there is a, um, a selection mechanism that has been created that is, can be um, described as peer review, um, that the, uh, the national human rights institutions they had their own um, uh, uh, selection committee, and they review they review the ap the application of uh, these incoming national human rights institutions institution based on the Paris principles, and the uh, this this um, selection committee is supported by the office of office of high commissioner, um, so that it can uh, so there's there's a clear link between. Um, the, the UN and, the, and this institution. Um, the interesting thing is obviously peer review and that is uh, only comprised of NHRI's institutions and there's no um, um, participation of member states or representatives of member states 
in that particular process for when it comes to the the uh, the and the NHRIs. So that is that's also that you can uh, a uh, something you can look into and take into consideration when it comes to the, uh, the selection mechanism for the um, um, yeah for the NS participation process. So we're looking at selection mechanism and selection criteria, and obviously we're all geared towards the uh, the um, the workshop that is upcoming. So just to, to refresh your memory again, the workshop is the end, end of next month, 21st, 24th, the four topics um, are, are identified, they arrive from the, the enhanced participation process and the General Assembly and organized by the Office of the High Commissioner. So the only thing in terms of registration, the only thing that you need to, to provide is have a, a, a Indigo account um, and a letter of recommendation from your uh, respective representative institution or indigenous peoples. You do not require um, a NGO ECOSOC status to be able to register for the um, for the uh, for, for the expert workshop. Um, you are, however, you are um, advised to register as soon as possible, um, um, as. Yeah, there, there's there's a limited meeting space of, uh, um, available within the UN at Palais des Nations in, in, in Geneva, and perhaps uh, if we can see there's a, there's a, a number um, uh, uh, and a solid number of, of participants, then we could uh, of the Office of High Commission could petition with the UN, UN office in Geneva for a bigger room. Uh, so if you if you do uh, uh, want to participate, please. Um, um, you know, register as soon as possible. This meeting, uh, this expert workshop will not be a hybrid meeting. There's no virtual participation. It is all in person. Um, so in terms of the submissions for, because of ex every expert workshop were the, or in this particular expert workshop, uh, the submissions are, are very important. Um, so you, you are invited to submit your ideas on the four topics. Um, and and to yeah, advise to refrain as much as possible from history lessons, um, as the idea is to, to generate as many ideas as possible on on the uh, the venues of participation, participation modalities, and selection criteria mechanism. And uh, as the sub summary report will uh, of the workshop will rely on submissions that have been reinforced on the floor during the actual workshop. So it is very important that you provide uh, your submissions in English, French, or Spanish with a maximum length of 2,500 words and to be sent to the UN by October 31st. And as you can see down below, there's an email address that, um, that where you can send the, um, your submission to. And if you so desire, or if you, if you think it would help other indigenous peoples and or member states, um, you can, um, uh, yeah, opt to publish the the of have your submission published on this uh, website of the Office of High Commissioner. Uh, in terms of the recommendations, obviously there's a summary reports. However, what do we want in terms of process? Um, so as uh, to yeah, to um, as a suggestion, uh, you may wish to support a negotiation process that includes. A, a, a resolution in September 2023, so that's next year, to start the consultations on the four topics, but in a more substantial way. Um, and so that these consultations will be occurring just like the General Assembly process, open, informal, um, and take into account views of emerging from indigenous peoples that have organized through reg regional meetings as well. And then the, uh, the, to have a decision through a standalone resolution adopted uh, by the Human Rights Council in September 2024. This to ensure that there's a, a negotiation process, that there's participation of indigenous peoples, and that the ex expert workshop uh, will not be a standalone event. Uh, so because we had previously we had round tables and there were summary reports of those, but those um, are just standalone events and it's not, no, not part of a of a negotiation process. So that's a recommendation that, um, uh, yeah, that you can take into account when you provide your submissions. Um, obviously for this, uh, for the um, section criteria, there's three guiding questions. 
Um, one is on like, how would a new mechanism for the accreditation of any people's representatives and institutions facilitate the process? The second, what we, would be the nature and the, and the membership of such mechanism? And I now realize these are focused on mechanism and not criteria and which power would the uh, mechanism have and which other existing UN bodies could be involved in the decision on accreditations and how would its decision be appealed? And then in terms of the, the selection criteria, what factors should be considered to assess if applicants are indigenous? Uh, second is which credentials would be necessar necessary for representative of indigenous people's institutions to be considered eligible? And then which process would the new established mechanism apply in granting the status of the new category of participation? Are there similar existing accreditation processes that could be considered? Um, and these are not, oh, sorry. These guiding questions are not uh, drafted by the coordinating body, just to be very clear. These are guiding questions that are, are written and by the, um, uh, by the Office of High Commissioner. Um, so these are, are the kind of questions that we uh, hope to be focusing on so that you have um, a more clear idea on selection mechanism and selection criteria for the duration of this, uh, of this um, yeah, virtual dialogue. Thank you so much. My friends, I hope you enjoyed this. Please consider to subscribe, to comment, and to share this video on your socials.